to carry out our deployment in all 260 districts in the country. And so currently, as we see, just as we had earlier on deployed for HIV, we now also have TB Trapa running in all 260 districts of Ghana. Now, what were some of the objectives we sought to achieve when we did this deployment? There were two key issues. And these issues were meant to solve problems for health information management, especially when it comes to omissions and errors during data collection and entry. And that is a problem that the transactional data capture using the tracker system is able to help us uh, resolve a lot more effectively. So key things we needed to solve was to introduce this automated transactional data collection system and then use it to be able to generate our routine data and indicators as needed across all the levels of care. And these objectives were directly in line with the mandate of the Ghana Health Service for ensuring universal access to critical health service. And so it was, uh, we had a buy-in from the managers across the service and were able to proceed with this deployment. As part of our deployment uh, strategy, we were able to do some detailed documentation, including the development of a manual that guided end users on how to actually use the TV tracker. Now, one of the critical things that uh, we communicated during the training session was to provide hands-on training because it's critical that during these trainings, you are able to convince yourself that end users are able to use the system as you have uh, uh, taught them. And so practical sessions were organized during this training where officers had the opportunity to actually even carry their live TV registers that had live data to the training sessions. And throughout the training sessions, they were able to use this live data to practice how to use the system. And then also, during these training sessions, we were able to plan routine monitoring visits so that uh, we are able to support the uh, teams as they go back to their various facilities to continue to capture data using the tracker system. Another thing that we also were able to do was to do some uh, post-training sessions held with the program officers and our regional health information officers across the country so that they will be able to have enough capacity, support and provide assistance remotely to end users so that every uh, user uh, query don't have to be handled by the national team at the national level. And so these uh, cascaded uh, support levels were able to improve how we are able to respond to a number of the issues. Now, what was our TV tracker system supposed to solve for us? It was to help us track all susceptible TV cases. It was also supposed to help us to track all treatment and outcome as far as TB is concerned, and then also multi-drug resistant TB cases in all our tertiary level hospitals were also being tracked. Our scope of implementation, as I had already mentioned, is that we're able to implement tracker in all 260 districts of Ghana. And so currently, we are able to see that all TV uh, clients are being captured through the tracker system. And we have also been able to generate the uh, routine uh, report that is the TB case registration report and TB treatment outcome report, as well as the multiple drug resistant TB report. And so that process has also been automated, and we are currently going through that with facilities being able to capture the data quite effectively. And so you see this just a screenshot of uh, one of the automated reports that we picked from the system. 
this is on the TB outcome. And so it reduces drastically the issues with uh, data entry errors. If facilities have to enter these reports manually by counting from the various registers and tracker have been able to help us do this quite effectively. Now, even though we had a number of successes and learning from a lot of the stages that we went through when we developed HIV uh, tracker, we needed to be uh, a bit more cautious and put in a number of strategies to allow us to deploy this very successfully without the hitches that we had to overcome when we're deploying the HIV tracker. But key among the issues that uh, we identified from that deployment had to do with the acquisition of the electronic devices that is under a tablet because you need a lot of that to be able to do a nationwide deployment. And then funding for training of the healthcare providers across the facilities in the country was also a challenge. And then of course, the big thing is change management where you have to shift people from systems that would they were using or their old ways of doing this back onto a new tracker system. Then the stability of the tracker app for offline data capture was also uh, one critical thing because once you roll out and then people are capturing data on the Android app and then it begins to uh, misbehave, there is some sort of apathy that sets in because you capture data and you are not able to sync successfully onto the server. So that sometimes affects the enthusiasm with which facilities capture the data. So it was one of the critical things that came up when we deployed the uh, HIV tracker. So it was one of the things we were looking out for when we started with the TB tracker as well. Then the abuse of devices by end users, and that brings in the issue of MDMs to be able to restrict what the end users can put on these devices and all that. How did we overcome these challenges? It is important to engage your partners very well. And when we say partners, we need all development partners, and then partners within the country who have interest in the capture of TB data or any other service that you want to use electronic systems to run. And so we needed those engagement. We also did a progressive deployment instead of a one-time deployment. So as far as TB tracker is concerned, based on what we had learned from HIV, we did it step by step across uh, districts in the country. And so it made it a lot more uh, easier to deploy than we had gone through when we first started with HIV. Then it was also critical to ensure that whatever deployment we were doing, the tool itself that we were deploying was meeting the service provider's needs. So they could use it effectively to manage their cases without uh, a lot of uh, hindrances. So the content of the tool was reviewed drastically to make sure that what we were capturing was the very essential data that was needed as far as TB HIV is concerned. And then we had to try multiple versions of the address app to identify one that was stable for our case and be able to deploy that. Critical was the fact that as far as TB was concerned, a lot of the facilities in Ghana that had a number of TB cases that were quite high, were largely around the district capitals. And so most of them had stable internet. So in those districts where we had stable in internet, apart from deploying the Android app, we also uh, spent a lot of time building the capacity of the teams to be able to use the online version that is through the browser, either through the Android app that was, uh, the Android device that was supplied to them or through any other uh, electronic device that had internet connectivity and could be locked into the system. And so whenever they had challenges with the Android app at the facility level, they're able to switch to the online one to be able to still capture their data and report appropriately. In conclusion, I want to say that uh, uh, 
electronic systems are good. They always help solve a lot of problems, especially with regards to improving data quality. But the most critical thing that we should always look out for has to be with the human beings that we are going to use to run the system. And when we say human beings, it's not just the system developers or maintenance team, but then the end users, because they are critical. And you, if you don't get their buy-in, the system may be working effectively, but they will simply still not use it. So it was critical for us to get district uh, teams, the health information officer, the facility managers, case managers to be able to agree that TB tracker was a, a better way of managing our TB data as far as improving our information capture in the country was concerned. And when data quality is improved, uh, whether it is electronic or you are actually still supporting with some form of paper base, it's still uh, better with the attitude of the people that you are working with them. So that was a critical lesson for us. And uh, we can see that we've uh, gotten a lot more ambassadors at the facility level who have become champions and really uh, push, it, push us to be able to improve the system as we go through these deployments. So in a nutshell, it's not been uh, too bad, but uh, it's been a success deploying TB tracker as well, much improved than we did for HIV because uh, as I said earlier, when we did the HIV, there were a number of challenges that we had to go through, number of iterations before we got the system moving, but those ones were uh, largely resolved when we moved on to the TB because there were certain mistakes or uh, things we overlooked when we deployed that we took consideration to when we planned for TB uh, deployment, and that made it quite effective for us. So. Uh, I think uh, in a nutshell, this is what we have for you from Ghana. Thank you. Many thanks. First of all, it's it's very impressive the, um, the the how the deployment of uh, of um, of the TV program was uh, in uh, in Ghana. Um, the, we have a question already in the expert launch, so I would like to ask Alice if we have to move the discussion to the to Slack. If we just uh, how do you usually? Um, what we can do, we can just, once again, like um, encourage anyone who has any question to ask, to, uh, to raise them on, to, 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 um, to write them on Slack, on this channel, and then we will, then we will read them and Oswald will reply to them live. Is that okay, Marta? Yes, sure. Yes, great. Um, so as you were saying, we have... We have a first question for you, Ozad. Um, do you have biometric option for registering TB patients or do you have plan to do so? So with the biometric option for registering TB clients, currently we haven't uh, considered that option uh, largely due to infrastructure availability and some other challenges. So as we speak now, we have not had any consideration regarding implementing biometric system for registering TV plans. Thank you. And then do you have similar tracker program for HIV? If yes, is there any interconnectivity between the TB and HIV tracker programs? Yes, because uh, what we have done is to run both uh, uh, programs on the same instance. So, because we do have some uh, data we are capturing in HIV that has some connection with what we have for TV as well. So we are running both of them on the same uh, instance. Thank you, Oswald. Well. Um, we have another question. How are you dealing with patient identification, especially where patients 
have to be classified. So with patient identification, what we have done is to uh, create a unique ID for each TB client that is registered on the system. And that is what we are currently running. Again, in country, we have our national identification authority that is currently deploying uh, the national identification system for all citizens in the country. So for the time being, we are implementing our own unique ID system for clients that are registered. It's our hope that uh, once the national identification system uh, process is completed, we will gradually uh, replace these unique IDs with uh, clients' national IDs, and that will largely improve how we are able to notify clients on the system. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, another question, for those areas that are without networking connectivity, how are the facility staff submitting data? Yeah, so for uh, facilities that do not have internet connectivity or are quite unstable, they largely have to depend on the offline Android app. So they capture data offline and then periodically, they will have to then move to a location that has better connectivity and then upload their data. Thank you. Um, then we have another question. Um, what is the general acceptance of stakeholders in this deployment, TB and HIV tracker, as well as aggregate? Then is data coming from these sources and do they have any quality issue? And final question, internet connection is a challenge in the third world, but how areas with low connectivity are able to manage the Android device in reporting? With regards to uh, stakeholder acceptance, I, I can say generally it's been good because uh, uh, based on what we did for HIV and how the system is running now, it was, a good uh, opportunity to always showcase what HIV is doing. And so if we've been able, that's why the challenge is to deploy TB uh, tracker for HIV and was working well, it was possible to do for TB. So for as far as stakeholder acceptance is concerned for Ghana, I would say that is largely very good and that's largely helped how we are able to deploy the system. And talking of, quality issues. Largely, we have very minimal quality issues as far as the, the tracker is concerned because a lot of, we're building a lot of uh, queries and checks to be able to uh, reduce the errors that uh, we have uh, literally had a users uh, capturing onto the system. So data quality issues have largely uh, improved as far as the tracker connection is concerned. And, as I indicated earlier, with regards to internet connectivity, where there is very good internet connectivity, we deploy both systems, both Android and then the online, and users are able to switch between them as and when it is convenient for them. Thank you, Zan. I have another yeah. question. Um, how large? How large is the support team for TB tracker deployment and how many officers do they provide support for? So uh, we do have uh, a national team that supports uh, TB tracker deployment and that team has a uh, uh, members from both the gyms to technical team as well as the national TB program. So it's sort of a joint team, the MAE uh, uh, component from the TB program. Then at the regional and district level, then at the regional and district level, we have also built capacity for the health information officers who provide direct uh, support to the facilities that capture this data. But basically, at the national level, we have a core team of 10 persons in there that are uh, leading this uh, support as far as TB tracker deployment is concerned. Thank 
Thank you so much as well. Um, we don't have any other questions. Let's give a few seconds to participants so that they can then can write them. Actually, what we're going to do, because I see that we are now 60 on the call, um, anyone who has a question, you can just raise your hand here on Zoom and you will have the opportunity to ask your question live directly to Oswald. So don't hesitate to raise your hand if you have any questions. We have one, Mohamed Bamoy. Um, you can unmute yourself. Please go ahead. Yeah, um, I know um, getting funding for those um, areas, those third world countries like Ghana to buy tablets is a bit more difficult. So how are you able to convince partners to get Android device or tablet for all those uh, facilities that are collecting TB data? Okay, so if I uh, may answer this question, yeah, it is true that it is difficult to get these tablets uh, and get partners to be able to support the procurement of tablets for such last field deployment. But, uh, well, would I say we're fortunate in the planning stage when we put up a proposal to Global Fund and other partners to be able to support part of the things that we consider critical has to do with these devices for the deployment. And so mostly we would always recommend that we do not even ask for the money to procure these devices, but to ask them to be able to procure them from their end according to the specifications that we need to be able to deploy them. So it was part of our proposal when we were certain uh, seeking for funding to be able to do these deployments and that is how we're able to get that support but it is admittedly not easy to be able to get this uh, uh, partner to support with large-scale deployment as we have done in Ghana but it has largely been successful in our case through proposals that we have submitted. Thank you as well. I have another question actually on Slack. Do you have a sustainability plan to replace tablets as they become damaged or obsolete? Yes, so we do have a sustainability plan for damaged tablets. In Ghana, what we have done is that we have made uh, managers at the various levels to understand that uh, whatever tablet that we have provided at the first uh, for the for the during the deployment stage is just a startup for you and so at the facility level if there is a need to increase the number of tablets you need to deploy you need to buy from your internally generated funds to be able to supplement what we have been able to secure through donor support and then we have also set up uh uh, protocols to allow facilities to buy should the device be damaged or it is stolen the facility then takes up the responsibility of replacing that again we have also agreed uh, with the facilities to be able to get authorized service uh, uh, providers for these uh, devices to be able to maintain them when there are damages that can be uh, worked on so for instance if the devices we have procured are Samsung devices. We make sure that we have this uh, maintenance agreements with so, uh, authorized service outlets that the facilities can link up with to get these devices maintained for them. But largely, it's the duty of the facilities to replace damaged or stolen devices or buy uh, extra ones to be able to do their deploy uh, their data capture as they need a right. Thank you as well. Um, 
any other questions from the participants, you can raise your hands and you will have the mic. I have a question for Oswald. Actually, I think Oswald, you explained it in the early slides if you want to go back. Um, but uh, I, I would like to understand in a simple way the, the um, how long did it take the deployment and how did you face it? Like how, how did you organize your, your implementation in terms of timing and, and scope? I think you had a slide before, but if you can share some details on that, because I think for being a countrywide implementation, it's being quite fast. I, I'm under the impression. So I, I understand you, you had the experience from yeah. HIV and probably some hardware already distributed, but uh, I think it would be very interesting to hear a bit about that. Okay. So uh, largely what we did was to have uh, about five teams. We created five teams where we had two technical team members and then two from the MAE team from uh, the National TB program. And then we moved uh, from one region to the other to carry out that deployment. I think it took us uh, uh, about uh, about about four to six weeks to uh, do the deployment of course. One of the challenges we faced, of course, was the issue with COVID because uh, by then we had COVID going on. So the numbers that we could uh, train per region had to be managed in a way that we are able to uh, adhere to COVID protocol. So we had multiple sessions in some regions to be able to carry out that deployment, but it was largely successful within the time frame that we set out to do it. Okay, thank you. Let's give a few seconds to participants who want to, to ask questions. You can raise your hand. Okay, I think there is no more questions now. Um, Just what you won't respond first. Sorry, what did you say? We just got to won't raise his hand. Oh, sorry, I didn't see that. Sorry, T. Wonge, just a minute and you have the floor. Yes, please ask your question, T. Wonge. All right, uh, thank you. So I think you just wanted some clarification in terms of uh, user support. How are your user support arrangements like in terms of, let's say, escalating issues or providing immediate uh, response to, to users when they face challenges? What are the arrangements or maybe what issues are you facing? If I got your question right, you were talking of uh, user support. And so we uh, Ghana have, uh, we have levels across the country. So uh, at the facility level, who are the end users? At the district, we have the first level of user support. So you have the district health information officers and then the TBMAE officers who are at the district level that give the first line of support. And then at the regional level, we have the regional health information officers that coordinate the support levels as far as the region is concerned. Then we have the national level where we have the core team that I mentioned earlier, coordinating the support that goes out to the users. So we largely uh, will have 
issues travel as far back, uh, as far high to the national level if it becomes a major issue that is not able to uh, district and regional offices are not able to resolve for any users, then you will have the national team coming in to be able to resolve them. But we have clear uh, documented rules for each of these levels on what they need to do or what, what type of support that they can give to end users. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much as well. Um, I don't see any other questions, so I think we can we can end the 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 launch session now. Marta, Jaime, is that okay? Yes. Yes. That's yes. Uh, that's very okay. Thank you so much, uh, Oswald, for your availability and for replying to these questions and for this. Great presentation. Thank you so much. Oh, now we see you as well. Hello. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hi, Mata. Hi. How are <laughs> thank you? Thank you. Thank you. All right. No, thank you. It's it's been it's a great presentation, and I was looking forward to see the presentation for your TV deployment, which is a improved version of your HIV deployment, right? <laughs> we yeah. keep learning. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you, I'm sure we'll be in contact. So I think uh, then, um, Alice, I think we can, um, because that was the content for today, uh, we will have more time for real cases and presentations uh, on Thursday at the same time. And then for questions, we come out on Friday early morning. But I think now we could stay for troubleshooting. Um, uh, if anyone, uh, Jaime, yes. I don't know who is speaking. Someone is speaking, but it's very low. I can't hear. Hi, Martin. Should we uh, stop the recording now? Yes, we can.